<clears throat> Alright, gangsterinos. Today there's, we're doing something way different. We're going to talk about dun, 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 dun. Dungeons and Dragons, which I've been playing since edition 2. However, just to, just to avoid edition wars in the comments and in other places and in the future, I've been playing for so long and I have so many experience levels in Dungeon Master that I rarely even use the books at all, except when I just can't remember something really basic or um, I'm direct lifting a small piece of the book to make some grander system work more efficiently. But, um, I played one, I played two. I didn't play one when it first came out. I'm not that old. I played one a lot later, but I did play it. It's, it's good. It's good. It's fine. Um, the beauty of Dungeons & Dragons is that it can either be great or it can be terrible. If it's poorly designed or poorly thought out or, or, your, or it's your first couple times, don't be hard on yourself. Especially if it's your first couple times doing it. Because if it's your first time being a dungeon master, you just... It's, it's an art. It's an art and a science. And... One of the really basic things is dungeons. I mean, they're in the name, for God's sake. They've got to be something that's important in the system. A well-designed dungeon that's fun and interesting and possible for the players to beat, but difficult for them to beat, or at least difficult until they find that one little spot of, of this is how you do it. That, 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 little, that little crack in the armor of difficulty that you can just zoop through and it's suddenly much easier. Um, armor of Difficulty, by the way, is a, is a cursed item. You will cover cursed items a lot later, but basically they make your life much harder. <laughs> and they suck in pretty much every way. Even though some of them are very strong weapons and armor and other things of that nature, they are they have significant drawbacks that I wouldn't wish on anyone. Um, so, just to be... <clears throat> so, 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 what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about your very first dungeon. It's for three or four... It's, a, it's for a party, that is, the players, characters of three to four people who are all level one um, and it's been designed well enough that you don't have to have any one specific party to be able to beat it. You can beat it with uh, anybody. And I'm going to cut to it right now. So as you can see, we have irregular walls, we have several well-placed enemies that are mainly kobolds, orcs, and slimes, and we have twists and turns and some hidden doorways and a hidden stairway. Uh, we have a rare, uh, not really rare, but pretty powerful wand involved too. The uh, icy wand is, uh, as you might imagine, shoots ice. <clears throat> um, so the... Uh, Basically, the way I know I just cut to the notes, but I'm going to read them out loud just in case they were hard to read because, frankly, my handwriting's not that great. Um, we have a magic candle that plays a pre recorded plot related message for someone named Dunrick, which kudos to you, super huge bonus points to you if you know what that's a reference to uh, because it is a specific reference. And it ends with an even more Mimi reference to But Thou Art Not Dunrick. So we get, we, the first room, the very first room you're in, we have a message that's obviously important and obviously for someone and obviously plot related, directly plot related to the overarching story of their whole game. Uh, but it was for someone else. And it may have been recorded a long time ago by someone who's currently not alive. <clears throat> uh, we have goblins, we have kobolds, we have slimes, and we have a known NPC. An NPC is a non-player character. Um, I'm thinking maybe the gnome is hiding from the creatures or the gnome knows something really important about it. Um, 
about the dungeon overall. As we see in the map, however, um, the gnome is actually um, sitting right next to a secret door. That's what those um, spots that look like uh, connect dotted lines connecting rooms are. Those are secret doors. Uh, what I was thinking is you rescue the gnome from the kobolds, which are just, they're like little goblins. They're, they're like little Moria goblins. They're just not really very difficult at all. Um, you know, I mean, but they have poisonous weapons and stuff like that. They have, they are a threat. They're just not a very strong threat. Uh, and then the gnome shows you the secret way out or something like that. <laughs> and then we have, uh, we have, da, 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 we have three bags of coins. Hooray to that. But what if they're counterfeit? Extra spicy option there. Some of them are counterfeit or all of them are. Um, we have a vase with a flying carpet in it. Uh, which is a quick, easy way to get over the big chasm. That's what that one spot where the room looks like the whole room is broken. That's a big hole. Um, and, you know, I put a way to get through it there. Because when you have dungeons... Very important dungeon design topic. When you have dungeons that have an impassable barrier and still a lot more dungeon to go, always, even if it's some well-hidden secret door or something like that, always put a way past it. Or let them come back a lot later and find a way past it because they're suddenly a lot... Because, I mean, you know, once they know a flying spell, they're past it. And at level one, they probably don't. But at level two or even three or even, you know, at level two or three, they might. If they're the right type of castle. Um, we have a corpse with several belongings that rises as a ghoul. A ghoul is like a kind of an evil dead type zombie. They're not really very hard to kill at all, actually. Um, and we have a potion of fire breath. Essential. Essential item. Potion of fire breath is essential, number one, because it makes you blow fire like a dragon. Hooray to that. <laughs> not unlike certain hot sauces, which I'm sure we've all tried. Uh, but... Because the secret doorway, one of the things I forgot to mark on the map is that the secret doorway, that little square in the corner, um, that's that hidden stairway, that's covered by fungus. Now, I know you're thinking, fungus, why, why, DM, why fungus? Fungus can't even do anything bad. It can, because what it does is it causes things like syndromes, such as mental illness, uh, difficulty breathing, numerous other problems. And it actually flexes like a muscle to throw itself a big cloud out. One of its one of the monstrous fungus's reaction to being stepped on is um, explode pods suddenly with no warning to just flood the whole room with poisonous noxious who the hell knows what that you definitely don't want to get on your skin eyes or anywhere else. Treat that shit like anthrax on me because that's about what it's like. <clears throat> and there's even some of them that just make you fall down dead outright. Uh, I left that on the sign so that you can just pick the type of fungus you want to use. I, I, I that's my design. Style is I leave certain things on a sign so that you can assign it yourself to be whatever you want it to be. Uh, we have a pile of hay, which is uh, cla another classic meme reference to the game Immortal, the Immortal for the NES and for the Sega. The wizard sleeps on a pile of hay each time you save the game. Um, but, you know, that's just a quick, safe place for you to rest. And we have a sword plus two, which is, you know, a, a really routine weapon. Plus two means that it has two, two, the number two added to it every time it swings successfully. And it's usually either to hit, which means the roll to roll of the uh, dice. These dice. Although I've added some dice to this myself, but these dice. The roll of them to either hit your opponent or the roll to determine how much damage you were doing to your opponent has a plus two on it. Either one, not both, sometimes both, sometimes with some things it's plus a little bit to this and the other thing too, but that's not really very common. Uh, fire elemental, probably one of the most dangerous things in the uh, place. Uh, they're like a big cloud of flames that looks kind of like a, kind of like Jafar from Aladdin except flames. Uh, the genie Jafar, I guess, maybe. Well, no, that's... Uh, it's similar, if freights are said to be made of fire, but just imagine like a big flaming creature that's like just made of burning material that just never burns all the way up, so it's just a big cloud. Um, we have the icy wand, which of course is Zazoit, the fire elemental is defeated. Also, it's extra spicy option. We could put you could put a bucket of water somewhere in the <coughs> in the maze. 
or the dun somewhere in the dungeon, and if you successfully carry it all the way here and then throw it on the fire elemental, the fire elemental's dead immediately, period, defeated, period. Um, and we have a ghost NPC, which perhaps is the person who left the message in the magic candle for someone named Donric. Uh, we have a drake, which they're like dragons, but they don't have wings or breathe fire. So they're like a weak, poor man's dragon. Uh, and we have a big pile of treasure and, of course, some orcs. Now, if you want to be extra, extra challenging and a little bit extra on the spicy, spice arena side of things, um, you would put the, um, you would make some of the kobolds and some of the orcs a specialist class such as mage, thief, rogue, ra uh, not ranger, because rangers, I think I have a good alignment requirement. Alignment we'll cover later. It's a little bit complicated, but it means are you good or evil? Um... We could make, you could make one of the orcs a necromancer. That's just really low level, level, not, not higher, nothing in this place except the drake should be higher than level one or two. And you should assign adventuring classes as if they're characters to every one of the kobolds and all of the orcs. And they should be different classes at the rate of, for kobolds and orcs, I'm saying, I'm thinking at the rate of one out of every nearly a hundred is some kind of caster. Most are just basic, really basic classes like fire, thief, uh, you know, bard. Although that that would actually be pretty funny, and I don't I don't I don't know if I would expect that. I don't I don't think really anybody would expect to come across a random orc bard in the dungeon that you're clearing currently. Um, the Drake does not have a breath weapon, um, and it's just not really that strong actually it's just it's similar to a giant crocodile or the giant gila monster from that terrible 50s movie okay just time for just enough time for a quick extra point quickie um the slimes that i mentioned which there's actually only two of i probably should have put more of them but they're just not really very hard at all actually um one of the great things about slimes is they can contain an item if an item survives being absorbed because they absorb their victims like acid. So any item that is uh, has magical qualities or has natural resistance to acid can survive. And uh, some things survive because the slime's just not big enough. So when the characters slay the slimes, put one cracked, flawed, half-melted, or damaged item in their bodies. 